a hidden jewel in Cambodia, the Bantej Mar Temple. For hundreds of years, the temple was overgrown by jungle and forgotten by the world. For nearby villagers, it's a sacred place. 900 years of monsoon rains, looters, and wars have been hard on the temple. Yet its magic remains. So they mom and her husband So Peng regularly pray inside the old temple. Their daughters should learn to respect Buddha early on. Both So Peng and Sre Mom work with the village committee on restoring the temple and preserving the ancient Khmer traditions. Sre Mom was born here. The people of Bantej Mar are proud of their enchanting and legendary temple. Before sunrise, the monks of the Buddhist monastery gather for the first prayer. The monk's mantra, a meditative repetition of sacred syllables from ancient Indian Theravada scriptures, is supposed to protect the mind from disturbances. The monk's sing-song serves as an alarm clock for the inhabitants of Bantej Mar. At 4.30 a.m., loudspeakers broadcast the morning prayer into every nook and cranny of the village. Several thousand people live in the commune of Bantej Mar, located in northern Cambodia near the Thai border. It's a remote region. Until a few years ago, it had no paved connection to the outside world. So Peng and Sere Mom have lovingly arranged their traditional wooden house. Now the village has electricity. But it still doesn't have running water. Each house has its own well. In their garden, So Peng and Sre Mom grow coconuts, winter melons, and kitchen herbs with the help of their in-laws, who live with them most of the time. <laughs> so 
her mom grew up poor. As a child, she sold sweets to help her mother, who had a small food stall. When she was a teenager, Sreemom desperately wanted to leave the village. Then she met So Peng. For their wedding, their parents gave the couple a rice field and land for a house. And so they remained in the village. ກໍມາດີຫນຶ່ງຈອງອະຮຽນກາສາສາອົງເລປັນໄຕໂດຍສາແຕ່ຢ່າຕ້ອງຈູອັດກາກຄູນອ້າຍອະຮຽນຕ
The entire village is being spruced up for the big festival in three weeks' time. Its one asphalt road is repaired, and the moat is cleared to serve as the race course. During the rainy season, water lilies and lotus grew exuberantly. Now, however, they must be removed before the team's first training session. The temple complex is a huge geometric construction bordered by four moats. In the 12th century, Bantej Mar was one of the five great temples of the mighty Khmer Empire. Hundreds of Buddhist monks lived in the temple complex. It had a library, meditation halls, and a healing center. The flame of eternal light a fire that was never supposed to go out, burned in one room. An enigmatic face tower looms over the complex. Faces on each side gaze in the four cardinal directions. Each smile represents a different mood. On this special day, a ceremony is being held to rouse the longboats. During the rainy season, the boats were safely stored in the monastery, where they were said to sleep. Now they have to be awakened for the race. <laughs> A string ritual requests the spirits to agree to the boats being roused. Villagers' prayers are carried along the string to the prow of the boat. A burning candle symbolizes the boat's awakening. The boat race is not just a competition, it's a way to honor history. The slim racing boats are still built as they were 800 years ago when the Khmer army fought its legendary sea battles. Younger men are permitted to carry the boat to the moat, where in the next few days, the village elders will renovate it. As usual, women have to watch. Sreimon takes comfort knowing that at least in the neighboring village there's a women's team.
Cầm chà chà Cầm chà chà Cầm chà chà Cầm chà chà Bằng Bà ta hạ công chân năm đi ông đấy bằng anh Ông đấy Ông Ồ bà dì chân năm đi nhìn mọi người chân đi à Ôi chà 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 Cô hơi thiên nhiên Cô mới đọc phát, cô mới nhầm dây đọc phát lùm bạc Nó đọc phát về lùm bạc lăng Mẹ bố dương For the villagers, preparing together for Bon Om Tuk is one of the happiest weeks of the year In the evening after a busy day the gods and demons on the temple bridge guarantee the villagers emotional equilibrium just as they have for 800 years in Bantejmar. Villagers without wells at home fetch water from the temple reservoir. And from time to time, a truck delivers them drinking water. Although the village banks on tradition, Sremom has nothing against technical innovation, her Japanese moped makes life much easier. Especially for going to the little market, where with Thai currency, she can purchase everything the family doesn't grow itself. <laughs> ตัวเต็กรามเอ็ดเมียร์ลาโมปลาโอซีจะมาโซนจะมาโซนจะมาโซนจะมาโซนจะมาโซนจะมาโซนจะมาโซนจะมาโซนจะมาโซนจะมา
So Peng is with his friend Mao Si, the committee's president. They want to see how the temple restoration is coming along. During the turmoil of the Cambodian civil war in the 1970s, many temple treasures and statues were looted. The losses were huge, but restoration has begun. Recently, the villagers pulled this sandstone temple guard out of the moat, cleaned and put him back where he belongs. A temple guard returns to his post. The villagers are especially proud of reconstructing the temple's front enclosure wall. A nearly 200-meter-long sandstone relief tells the story of King Jayavarman VII. The temple is dedicated to his son, who was killed in battle here. Sandstone bas-reliefs immortalize the wars between the Khmer and the Cham, two great historical powers locked in a long-running dispute. The bas-reliefs show the origin of today's boat races. ការធ្វើសង្គ្រាមនេះគឺបាទជាមួយចាំ <coughs> Stepping inside the temple is like entering another world. It's a calm and entrancing place with mystical power. For So Peng and Mao Si, going to the temple is always a new experience. The huge sandstone blocks were brought here on rafts 800 years ago. Oxen and elephants worked on the site. The whole project was a logistical and technical feat. In the 12th century, Jayavarman VII had the temple built to be the second seat of power after the city of Angkor. Today, visitors are captivated by the mysteries of a long-vanished world. Originally, the temple of Bantej Mar was a religious center for both Buddhists and Hindus, a type of multi-religion temple. Conservators are working on the back of the temple. Thousands of widely scattered bits must be pieced together to rebuild the enclosure walls, a huge puzzle that will take decades to complete. 
Archaeologists and Khmer experts have developed computer models for this purpose and retrained village rice farmers to be stonemasons. Great precision is needed to perfectly fit the sandstone blocks together. It will not be possible to completely rebuild the huge temple, and that's not the plan. Conservators seek to make the temple and its art historically valuable bas-reliefs structurally secure and to prevent further decay. Next to the rear exit sits the 32-armed Bodhisattva, the Buddha of eternal compassion. The wedding season begins just before the water festival. The temple from the glorious Khmer era is a favorite backdrop for photographers and newlyweds. Once again, the temple of Bantej Mar is the region's spiritual center and also the center of social life. <laughs> Just two weeks till Bonom took. Two long boats are being readied for the traditional race. This boat gets a fresh coat of paint from the oldest person in the village. ตาโกนเคยเคยสบายตั้งปีกาดตั้งปีชนะประมาณด้วยอมตาเลยตุ๊กนิดๆเนี่ยเนี่ยขย่อมมาในตาเนี่ยเดี๋ยวจอมร่
Pops Raymond and So Peng know it will be hard to keep their daughters in the village when they get older. Many young Cambodians are attracted by the supposedly easy life in the city. That's why it's so important to make village life more attractive, ensuring that children don't grow up poor, that they get good educations and job training, so they might choose to settle down in the country. Raymond's very special dream has come true. She got the job. Although it's only half days as a preschool teacher, that's okay. Finally, she's working in a school. It's Sreemam's second day on the job. Everything is still quite new, both for the teacher and for the little ones, some of whom are accompanied by their grandmothers. In preschool, the children are supposed to get used to a normal school day. The following year, they begin first grade. In Cambodia, school attendance is compulsory, but some poor parents can't afford to buy the school uniform, and others need their children to help in the rice paddies. The community of Bantej Mar tries to make sure that everyone at least makes it through primary school. This month's lesson plan includes the Khmer script, counting from one to 10, and some basic social skills. ກະໄລບານນະກໍອ່າຕໍາເພດອາການ <laughs> Eating together is a daily ritual for the family. Today they're having fish amok, the Cambodian national dish. Fresh water fish from the village pond, boiled with coconut milk, palm sugar, ginger and limes. Every warm dish is accompanied by rice. Children adore the slightly sweet winter melon soup. Most of the ingredients come from the family garden. So Peng is proud he can provide fresh fruits and vegetables for his wife, children and in-laws. So Peng is working in his field today. A sack of fertilizer just fits on the back of the moped.
Cambodia has a tradition of growing rice, which is harvested twice a year in most of the country. But in Bantech Mar, the ground is too dry for that. That's why Sopeng has switched to cultivating cassava. With a little fertilizer, the nutritious tuber grows quickly. Much of the cassava harvest is exported to Thailand, where it's made into flour. ຫນຶ່ງພຽບງີ້ສູ່ຈຶ່ງສໄຫຼຕີບສາຂອງບໍ່ດໍາລົງມີນີ້ມີມີພຽບງີ້ສູ່ຈຶ່ງສໄຫ
Just three days till the big festival. Scouts form a guard of honor. This is because the racing boats are about to be launched. Another duly celebrated ritual. <laughs> we'll soon see if the repair work was successful or if the old planks still leak. The boat floats. But there's no training today. Thirteen rowers from the committee team are absent. Most of them are working in the fields. As for So Peng, he has an appointment. Shortly before Bonhomme took, a few foreigners have come to Bantage Mar. So Peng is guiding a married couple from England through the temple. He explains the bas relief that depicts everyday life in the Khmer Empire. And uh, this is the activity in the palace. You could see like that represented at the king and the queens, the concubines, yes. Yeah. And Chejavaraman the seven, he got two queens. Only two. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you too. <laughs> Only two. Only two. <laughs> Both of the queens, very strong women, yeah. But I don't think it's very much, just a little. Yeah, it's quite refreshing. Yeah, it's like the God blessing you. Yeah. <laughs> the God blessing yeah, you. Not too cold. Yeah. And this is the story of Buddha in this, in this wall, you see? This place? Yeah. The history of the Buddha. He want to uh, escape from like born and reborn, like the, the recognition. He want to re stop the recognition. So he like he tried to find out the enlightenment. He spent six years in the forest. Then he got enlightenment. After he got enlightenment, he just first take five men, these five men, to become the monks. You know, when these five men learned very well from the Buddha, they go to teach more and more monks. Go to teach more and more monks. So now you could see a lot of monks. Yeah. How many monks? Yeah. Oh, you can't find the way out. Yeah. <laughs> a little rain can't dampen Sopeng's enthusiasm. He loves sharing the temple's secrets with foreigners. Each year, only 2,000 travelers find their way to Bantej Mar, Cambodia's forgotten temple. All the visitors succumb to the temple's enchantment in all kinds of weather. It's very peaceful, it's wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's very peaceful, and uh, you feel as if you're getting away from all this yeah. mass tourism. Because sometimes in some of the temples, like Angkor Wat, is crazy. So many people there. Don't you feel Even this is your private temple? Uh, at the moment, <laughs> it probably is. Yeah, yes. your private temple. Private temple, yeah. <laughs> I feel a bit like Indiana Jones at the moment. <laughs>
At last it's Bonom Tuk, the big water festival. There's great excitement in Bandajmar. Word has gotten around that a very special boat race is being held here. The only one in Cambodia in a temple moat. Everyone from the committee team is here. Unfortunately, they didn't find the time to train properly. But they really want to win. Okay, ដែលគាត់បញ្ញាណាងការអស់ដៃចឹងពេលដែលអ្នកមុខលេងចង្វាក់លេងចង្វាចឹង <laughs> That said, they face stiff competition, school and student teams, and even a rowing team from the Cambodian army. The chief of police escorts local political celebrities to the finish line. One last time, a monk prays to Buddha for a lucky race. Sponsors hand out money. After the race, the boats will be brought back to the monastery to sleep for another year. All the teams use the same two boats. Whoever loses a preliminary round is eliminated. <laughs> now it's the committee's turn. They go to the starting line in front of the temple bridge. They'll be off very soon. Of course, Re Mom has come to cheer on her husband. In the other boat are the students. They get off to a much better start. The committee team is still trying to find its rhythm. The students are nearly two boat lengths ahead. It's a pretty clear defeat. Uh, 
cây hoa như này đi vẫn thấy tua bay chỉ tránh có bao nhiêu nơi tại sập bài thì pro dân bàn cho rùm ca nghe sừng cung và cho rùm ấp ao vị thi bón ông tu và chỉ đại chỉ vị thi bón của bên này chỉ mai là đôi khi bón tận nạp tiếp mai mũi này rất đau cao là về bát chay mắn thì bẩm bơ này bọn bán thôi sừng kia trên tất chỉ mui phụ trám hay bọn bán cho chuẩn đi lời phụ trám chẳng bây giờ cả miền bón tận nạp tiếp là cá cho rùm nổi thế này và cái ca cảm thấy dương mình cứ riêng tranh chiến thế tây dương cứ riêng châu rú hay sập bài sập bài đó. The village committee team does the traditional losers dance, a lovely custom guaranteeing that everyone will leave the water festival feeling good. Who knows? Maybe they'll win next year. Racing boats in the Bonhomme Tuk Water Festival in Bantage Mar.